What's the purpose of a game's art? Is it to make the game look prettier? The more detail and beauty of the art, the better the game looks? Or is it to add more realism and immersion to the game world we're playing in? What if it could be so much more than this? Today on Good Game Design, let's talk about when art meets gameplay. Yay! Rayman Origins was released in 2012 by Ubisoft as a revitalization of the beloved platformer series, and they used the self-created UbiArt framework engine to design all of it. UbiArt was built to create levels and art assets without having to write extensive code, and it's extremely easy to use. They've even expressed interest for anyone to use it to design their games, though they haven't released it to the public yet. But without a doubt, this new and improved Rayman has a very distinct art style. Everything's the perfect combination of grotesque and adorable, all the while being absolutely memorable. From intimidating bosses entering the arena, to even just the way you smack the door and its eyeball pops out. Every piece of art in this game is fascinating, but what was most impressive to me is how the art was used to work harmoniously with the gameplay. Let's back up a little bit. Rayman Origins is a near-perfect platformer. Your goal is to collect Electoons to progress through the 66 levels, which are all so varied from each other. You'll go from the dusty didgeridoo desert to an ice world with various fruits and utensils, from deep under the sea to flying through the sky avoiding lightning strikes. What I love about this game is how there are rewards and goals for all sorts of different playstyles. Most levels have six Electoons to collect, three of which are obtained by exploring and finding the secrets hidden in each stage, two of which are for collecting enough lums, 150 and 300, and one for beating the level again under a certain time limit. Already, there are three ways to complete each stage. Exploration, collect-a-thon completionism, and speedrunning, all of which net you a portion of electoons you need to progress. And for those seeking an extra challenge, you can get a medal and a trophy for getting more lums or beating an even faster time, respectively. There's a little bit for everyone, and it encourages you to try out the different styles in tandem with each other. Some of my favorite parts of the game were finishing a stage and then playing it again to get the fastest time. It just felt great to blaze through a level once you've explored everything in it the first time. And really, Rayman Origins is all about fluidity and keeping speed. You may not be able to hit every jump or speed boost on your first attempt, but each level has some sort of faster method of completing it, whether it's bouncing on enemies' heads to maintain momentum, or spinning through obstacles to achieve the fastest route. Often they'll change the distance a bounce pad will send you, or how far you'll jump, just to make sure you have the best movement possible. This is most noticeable in the tricky treasure levels. These are the final exam stages of each world where you have to play almost perfectly to make it to the end and open up the chest. They are all about flow, and you can tell that each stage was carefully designed with that in mind. These gauntlets and the speedrunning challenges were the best way for me to grow as a player, and get used to how Rayman controls. The difficulty curve was perfect so that I was neither bored nor frustrated the whole way through. Now, where does the art come into all of this? Obviously every stage looks gorgeous and has that unique style to make it memorable, but it's also used in ways that truly make Rayman stand out as a platformer, working cohesively with the gameplay. First off, the secret levels will often be strategically hidden behind some sort of bush or wall, so you have to really be searching to find them. There's a lot of decoration placed in the foreground, so it may be tough to decipher what's just there for show, and what could be acting as camouflage. But more impressive was how the world will move, build, or destroy itself as you journey through a stage. Many levels are crumbling around you as you run through, or launching new obstacles in your path. So thinking on the fly is a must. If you're in a fiery furnace, you have to dodge spires of flame that shoot out at perfect intervals, or navigate walls of beetles in the desert as light keeps them at bay. Sometimes entire structures are collapsing and you need to run up pieces of metal as they're falling through the sky. These were some of my favorite levels because it felt like you were a master gymnast who could parkour your way through any treacherous situation, but also because the art made it feel seamless and like it was really happening. It didn't feel staged or like each each piece was meticulously placed so that you could get through it, even though it totally was. Instead, it felt like I caused it to happen, and that each leap was my choice of how to get through the disaster caving in around me. Some of the best examples of these are the aforementioned chess levels. Every stage has to be completed just the right way, which not only makes them extremely challenging, but makes you feel like a rock star when you complete them. Pirate ships are blowing up platforms, temples shoot out spikes to hinder you, and wooden scaffolding restructures itself to make it harder to progress. I never saw what was coming next, and every stage was an ordeal, but in a good way. It felt fresh and chaotic.
chaotic at the same time. Like, when this dragon eats a city in the background, I thought it was just for comedic effect. But then he burps it up, which causes huge sheets of ice to rain down on me. Or later, when I had to avoid stomach acid and literal heartburn as I entered the dragon's stomach. It's just genius. In fact, the sequel, Rayman Legends, had stages set to music, where every element appeared in beat with the song. Just imagine speeding your way through walls of enemies rocking out to Black Betty at the same time. Hilarious. When you complete all of the treasure levels, you unlock the final stage, the Land of the Livid Dead. This is by far the hardest level of the game and takes absolute precision to complete. Huge spiky tentacles form all around you as you bounce on zombies' heads, or ride a speeding bone... Fish, I don't know. The whole thing feels like an acclamation of what you've learned in this game. How to move fast and think fast at the same time. After climbing bone walls and dodging onslaughts of fireballs, you face the final boss, Big Mama. She's a cutie, isn't she? This is probably the perfect example of what I'm talking about with art meeting gameplay. Take a look at her design. She's painting her nails, spiky elbows, hot topic bracelets, and just a pile of eyeballs. Most of it seems to just be for aesthetic. And yet, all of these pieces play a part in how you fight this boss. The bracelets move up and down her arms, so you have to dodge them as well as staying afloat. You need to actually knock off her eyeball so that she becomes blind. And then she tries to smack you with her spiky elbows and drop you between her arms into the lava. I just love that every piece here is not just for show, but an actual part of the gameplay that you have to pay attention to. Here's another way of looking at it. Do you remember watching old cartoons as a kid and seeing the difference between background art versus foreground art? Sometimes there'd be part of the drawing that just looks different from the rest of the frame. A little less detailed, a little brighter. Normally this means that the character is going to interact with the item in some way, and they will need to animate it. You can spot these from a mile away. Here, look. Which item do you think Jerry is going to use to stop Tom? The spoon. You see how it's very simply drawn and a solid color compared to the rest of the art? These are all over cartoons, and it has to do with objects needing to be animated rather than art that can just stay stagnant. My point is, Rayman Origins is like the polar opposite of this. Everything used as its art assets look like they could either be for design or for gameplay, and it all blends together perfectly. Not only is the art in this game distinctive, but it's often used as a gameplay element that you need to interact with to complete your objective. And I don't know if I've seen another game do it as beautifully and cohesively as Rayman Origins did. But of course, they aren't the only game to do so. Can you think of another game you've played that uses its art as an inherent part of the gameplay as well? Tell me about it in the comments below, I'd love to hear it. Thanks for watching another episode of Good Game Design. Stay frosty, my friends. Hey, I'm Snowman, and I just wanted to let you know that you're beautiful. Don't ever let anybody tell you different. I appreciate you all so much, and I can't thank you enough for everything you do. Of course, if you enjoyed, subscribe, and if you want to check out more videos by me, click them here. Be sure to follow me on Twitter for updates, and if you ever want to support the channel and improve quality for the future, you can do that through Patreon. I'll see you guys next time.